brethren, I pray you sing a new song. Sing praise in the assembly of the righteous. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the high praise of God be on the mouths of the saints and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the demonic nations and punishments on those peoples to bind their kings with chains. Dishonor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Shalom Israel, Shalom, Shalom. This is Brother Haram, the sons of Jacob. Brother Debar. Uh, Brother Mahar. And uh, first and foremost, before we start, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shem and Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. And in today's video, we're going to uh, touch over the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25. You know, this is a parable that we all had to sit down and sup with to get together, you know. Where he said, um, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You know, I always tried to go through this parable by myself, and it would be a little bit more challenging. But then I sat down with the Akim, and, you know, stuff started un unfolding. And the next thing you know, we got the understanding of it, you know? Stuff started unraveling. Uh, I bring out a quick precept. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. God. Classic scripture, Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 9. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. And Khan, you know, the labor was actually um, getting these scriptures and finding precepts that make sense of other precepts, man. You know? Khan. Khan, read the next verse. Khan, it says, for if, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But one to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help him up. Right. Like, you want me to keep going? Yeah, Khan. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Right. So it says, if two lie together, they have heat. You know, you 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 by yourself, you yeah, you got that friction, you got, and you got that body heat that goes together. So that's symbolic for, you know, two are better than one. But uh, the next part is what I was really trying to get. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Right. A threefold cord is a uh, cord is not quickly broken. That's like us. Uh, each one of us being uh, a part of a cord, uh, and you get a knife. If you got one cord, you can just you can cut that with a knife. But when you got three cords together, it's gonna be way harder. You're gonna have to keep keep gnawing at that cord <laughs> to try to get it to break. It's a lot. That's all I want to get. Though. No, you good. Right? So with that, we're just gonna dive right into it. This is Matthew chapter 25 and verse one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven. So like, I'm gonna read through it, and then we're gonna go through verse by verse and break it down. This is Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But they, like, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the Lord, the, like, behold, the bridegroom cometh, Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know not what neither, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Uh -huh. So I'm going to start at verse 1 again. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to men, wait, to meet the bridegroom. So the virgins is... um. The virgins is Israel, kind. The virgins is Israelites. Um, anybody got a precept on that? I came thinking of a precept on us being the virgins. <clears throat> Not off the top though. I thought you had the one in Luke though. Go to the next Israel verse though. Like into a virgin. Kind. Uh, trans virgin. Yeah, where is that? You at? know how it's worded. 
to like you. I'm liking the unto chase version. Yeah. God. It's one of second edges too. They say. Hey, it's one in Jeremiah. He said, um, "The daughters of Israel." Is yeah, that's where's that at? That's like right. Jeremiah. It's like one of the early chapters, like verse six. It's like two and six or three and six. Or Cause I seen it earlier. Maybe nine. Uh, Google. Oh, you want to go to Google? Yeah. Like it, Israel. We should have wrote down that precept. We should have wrote down that precept. <laughs> wrote down every other <laughs> mm hmm. All right, so this is uh, Jeremiah 6 and 2. It says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. You know, uh, the daughter of Zion is talking about our homeland and it's talking about. So he's likened Israel, the Israelites that's in the land, he has likened them to a delicate woman. That's why he calls himself. Uh, what, where we just get that where he was the husbandman uh john 15 and uh one yeah so that's why he called himself the husbandman and the, the land and the people is supposed to be the delicate woman okay. and this is where we get this parable from uh the israelites being the virgins and he's being the bridegroom okay. uh, all right so let me read the next verse uh hold on, yeah. hold on. so what we trying to we what we trying we gonna show before we move on to the next verse is that uh, the bridegroom, we know the bridegroom is supposed to be the uh, the husband and the uh, the wedding relationship. So let's get that in John 15 and 1 right quick. And then can you get the uh, Matthew 22 and 9? Mm -hmm. This is John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, right. and my father is the husbandman. Right, so he's saying, we know Yahweh is a mediator, so he said, I'm the true vine. And the father is the husbandman. So, Yahweh, Yahweh is this bridegroom that is talking about in uh, uh, the bridegroom with these ten virgins. Israel is a virgin. Uh, Yahweh is the bridegroom, the husbandman. And we have a job that we have to do also. And that goes into uh, the Matthew 22 and 9. Read that right This quick. is Matthew chapter 22 and verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. Right, so we're trying to bring other Israelites, other virgins back to the marriage so they can marry uh, the Most High God all over again because it talks about in Jeremiah 4, Jeremiah 4 or 5 where he said he divorced us. So now we're here to bid them back to the marriage. That's our job. All right, we can continue now. Okay, so I throw a quick precept on okay, that to add some more into it. <clears throat> and I like to look at Yahweh Shah like this in this particular um, context. Uh, when you go get married, you know, how they do it in America, you got that man there in the middle Saying, do you, um, you know, you um, do you, and then they say, I do. All right, the you priest. Know? Right, there you go, the priest. And he makes, um, he's like the mediator. Right. And it's just a scripture showing that Yahweh Shah is the mediator. First Timothy 2 and 5, classic scripture. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Come. And that's a beautiful point you brought out too. He's the mediator, because what is the priest? He's the mediator. Uh, he's Khan. the mediator. So Khan. that's a beautiful point. So you see a lot of relations there. I got what he was talking about, the bill of divorcement. This is Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. Oh, three. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet our treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Mm, right. So Khan, Israel, uh, Israel got that um, bill of divorcement. But Judah, Judah, we were still with the Most High, but we played the backsliding whore also. As it said in Hosea, he, you know, he was about to cast us off also. Um, Man, that's a beautiful scripture. Reading on or no? Yeah, yeah, Con. Con, it's the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. All right, so... Five were wise and five were foolish. The five that are wise, these are the ones that had the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because that's what wise is. You have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Fives were foolish. Like I said, these are Israelites. So you got to look at the, the foolish one. The wise ones is the ones that's, uh, that believe in the Bible in totality, following the law, statutes, commandments, and exercising their faith on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And the foolish ones is you can look at Christianity. You can look at Old Testament only or New Testament only. Negro only, Latino only. These are the foolish virgins. They're still Israelites, but they're foolish. 
They don't have no oil. The under, not wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Go ahead. Put on slack, 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 slack. Um, we didn't finish off on the first one. It says, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And I want to touch on what that lamp was. Yeah. This is Psalms 119 and verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. So this word, this book, is the lamp. Even the foolish and the wise got this lamp. We all got the book. We all got these words. Like it said in Ezra, uh, write these books and give it to the uh, holy and unholy. Done. You know, we all we all get this book, but it depends on what you do with it. You can keep going, though. Done. Quick precept. Proverbs 6 and 23, a classic precept again. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So just to add more to what the brother was saying with a classic precept, but going back and reading down. Matthew chapter Sorry, 25. Again. All right, Kyle. 25 verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And we already touched on the lamps. And to touch on the oil, um, I used, you know, two quick precepts. Um, go to Psalms uh, 104 and 15. Yeah, I'm there. And Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Yeah, and if y'all got any more, y'all want to add on to that. Uh, this is Psalms chapter 104 and verse 15. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man, mm -hmm. and oil to make his face he to said, shine. He said, oil to maketh his face to shine. What is that really talking about? We know if you put oil on your face, your face will shine. But you know the um, the scriptures say, um, give me give me this real quick, Job 11 and 6. Real quick. We know if you put oil on your face and make your face to shine. But is that really what he was meaning? Is that really, is that it that he was only trying to um, um, provide to us? Job what? 11 and 6. Con, this is Job chapter 11 and verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, uh -huh. and that they are double to that which is. So the secrets to wisdom, they are what? They, they are, are double, double to that which, which is. is. Meaning that the scriptures, when you read it on a plain level, it could mean what it say. But on a spiritual level, it can also mean something too. So that oil, of course, when you put oil on your face, it makes your face to shine. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. God, this is the book of Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 1. Mm-hmm. Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretations of a thing? Come on. A man's wisdom maketh his face he to shine. He said a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. Using those two precepts, you get the understanding that oil is also known as wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on the right-hand side also. Uh, so going back to Matthew, unless y'all got this. any precepts. Kind of says, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. God, and that's what wisdom do. And they tell you in Romans 12 and 2, um, when you when you get wisdom, knowledge, understanding, you have to renew your mind um, day in and day out. Uh -huh. And that's what that oil do. God, reading, reading on. Verse 3 again, it says, that they were foolish, that they were foolish. It's like, I'll start from 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. All right, so like he said, it's the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So if you look, and if you look at it, at the Christianity, they have no oil the fact that they think salvation is for everybody. Yeah. God loves everybody. God doesn't hate. They're they're obviously not using the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Bible to to see that this what they, that's a false doctrine. The need, uh, the uh, Old Testament only. They don't see that Yahweh is in the Old Testament. New Testament don't see the law is in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So they don't have this oil, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So like, and really, their doctrine is hollow, if you think about it. Because to be a Christian, you can't really just go back and read the Old Testament. Like, that'll be too hard. Like, everything lining up to what we're saying, and it ain't lining up to what Paul's saying. Okay. So it's like, it's, it's too hard. It's really just a hollowed out doctrine. But you can go ahead. Okay, reading on verse four, it says, "But the wise took oil, slacky. Like but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps." Kind, they um took, they took that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and mixed it with this word, and we're gonna see what happened. Go ahead. Kind, verse five. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and that's that Isaiah twenty nine. Right, and it says, as the bridegroom tarried, like uh, he always says, uh, 
though it tarry, wait, wait for, for it, it, so it shall surely come. God. So, it, you know, and it also says the Most High God is uh, very long-suffering. I think it says that in Syrac, where it says he's long-suffering. I think it's a you had in um, Lamentations um, 4 and 22 also. God. And you're talking about Syrac, Syrac 2, I believe. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, too. yeah Sorry, kind, of, too. kind of Sarah 2 and 11 For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy Long suffering and very pitiful And forgiveth sin and saveth in the time of affliction So he's This is what it's talking about uh, in verse uh, What is it verse five. Verse 5 Sorry. While the bridegroom Yahweh we, The husbandman Terry he's, he's long suffering They all slumbered and slept and with what that goes into, get that in Isaiah. Isaiah 29 and verse 10. For the Lord have poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Right. And have closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he cumbered. Right. So that's what that's talking about. You, uh, Though he, as the most high God is waiting, that everybody went to sleep. But, Con. you know, he, he still has that remnant that he's going to wake up out of that deep sleep. Con. And we can't forget that also. Con. And that deep sleep, sometimes in the Bible, that deep sleep could talk about the sleep of death. But in this particular case, Con. you have to understand that that deep sleep is talking about not being able to understand what's going on. You know, not being able to discern the times you live in it. Con. Not being able to discern the wisdom of your understanding. And I'm going to read this scripture to back up that position. This is Isaiah 6 and 9. It says, and he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. And that's what's going on. Con, y'all got a precept or y'all want to read it? Yeah, Con, I got a precept. Con. So even though it says that, uh, verse, uh, verse 5 says, while the bargum tarried, they all slept, slumber and slept. It says, uh, yeah, matter of fact, read the verse uh, 6. Read the verse. Read verse 6. Oh, okay, Con. Verse 6, Matthew 25 and 6. It says, And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Right, so how do you go out to meet him? Like he says, seek the Lord while he may be found. But this is the precept to prove it. This is Colossians 1 and 26. It says, Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. You know, one uh, Psalms 147 say who the saints is, the Israelites, just like these virgins. So, he put us in his sleep, and then he 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 woke up a remnant, and this is what it's talking about. Uh, even the mystery that been hid from uh, ages and generations, that's us being in this slumbered in sleep, as he's uh, tarrying. Uh -huh. But now it's made manifest to his saints. Now we are here uh, breaking down what the ten virgins mean, breaking down uh, mostly all the parables uh, of Yahweh Shah, uh -huh. what he spoke of, because if you think about it. Christians don't go into these parables. Mm -hmm. You know, Old precept. Testament only won't even touch the New <laughs> Testament. So this, they considered these five foolish virgins. The fact that you can look at these parables and say a damn Greek came up with these parables. You're crazy. Con. They don't get that deep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so y'all has, has something? Um, so like, yeah. I'm going to read verse six again and I'll read down. Con. And if I remember any scriptures, then I'll jump back. Con. Verse 5, it says, While the broom, the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. And I don't know if the brother touched on this, but that cry is us when we go out to the highways and byways. Okay. Like I tell you in Psalms um, chapter 1. No, if Proverbs. You can grab it. It's okay. like it. Proverbs chapter 1. Okay. Um, it tells you that we go to the chief concords and we plead. And we hey, and like I tell you in Isaiah 58. We go out and we cry aloud. And uh -huh. that's what that same cry is talking about. We go out and cry aloud and show our people their transgressions. Uh -huh. Things like 1 and 19. Uh, 1 and 20. Con, con, con. Con, this is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. And that's what we're doing. Con. She, she crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the opening of the gates in the city, she uttered her words, saying. And we all know what that goes into. Con. You it's know, the same thing. It's like, it's like, go ahead. Go, 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 the go. same thing we be out there telling them. Wake up out of this sleep. Uh -huh. the, the most high God put us in his sleep. Now it's time to wake up. The Lord, the Lord is angry with us. It's time to repent. All these different things we go out there and tell them. God, let me grab that precept in Romans. It's time to awake, man. Huh? Right. This is Romans 13 and um, verse 11. He said, and that, and that, knowing the time, that now is the is high time to awake out of sleep, 
For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Con. So that's that's what we got to do, man. We got to go out there to the highways and byways day in and day out, week in and week out. And not just us, but the whole nation of Israel, the men that had that spirit put upon them to go teach, they got to um they got to um take up they take up their Christ. It's like you take up their cross and follow Christ, man. Con. Con, you also, can't you can't um sorry. resist the spirit, man. It's told you quench not the spirit. Con. Go ahead, I Kind of also want to touch on this Malachi 4 and 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet, but before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Slot. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So, Khan, kind of, that's kind of everything that they was talking about is the same thing with what I just pulled, talking about Elijah. They had this. The most high had to send Elijah to come through and wake up the rest of the nation, you know? Oh. Starting with that mystery. God. He woke him up to reveal that mystery to everyone. Con. Con, where are we? Verse 6, and I'll read down. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And that's exactly what we go out to do. We go out there to do. We tell him the bridegroom is coming. Y'all better be ready. That's what go out to meet him. Y'all better, better be, be ready. ready, man. Con. Go ahead. Man. Hence that. But verse 7, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And that's exactly what we doing. I know the brother, he have a powerful way of delivering that with trimming your lamps, man. Kind. Um, basically, trimming your lamps, that's going into every week. All the virgins, all the ten virgins precept their Bible. The foolish even precept their Bible. The Old Testament only. They precept in their Bible. We precept in our Bible. The New Testament only. They precept in their Bible. We all precept in our Bible, you know? Con. But if you don't have a Bible in totality, you wasting your time. Con. If you really don't have that oil, that Con. wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and the Lord ain't really dealing with you on that level, then that then, Bible is useless. Then that yeah. Bible is useless. It's like so, having a gun without a clip and bullets in it. Con. Exactly. That's useless. why they lamps finna go out. And you shooting <laughs> blanks all day, and you got the gun to his head, and he say, shoot me, and you... That's all you hear is click. Yeah. <laughs> and you know... No boom. No boom. <laughs> no boom. <laughs> click, no boom, you know? And that's why we able to stand um, outside on the highway and byways bold as a lion, man. Because we actually got anointed with that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We actually got that oil. You know what I'm saying? Um, verse, um, verse 7, reading on, it says, Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. All right, so that goes into them wanting us to start to teach them even though they had all this time we've been out there wisdom crying without in the streets mm. we've been trying to teach yeah. them this whole time yeah. but you know, they got their own doctrine uh the doctrine of prosperity you know the doctrine to old testament where they can still smoke weed new testament where they can still they think they can still eat pork they still want to do these things and now they're gonna if, if there's gonna be a time where they're gonna come with to us and want some of that oil but we're gonna be like hell no nah, yeah. because we're gonna be trying to survive man in this time we coming in I think that's the Amos 5, Amos 11. Yeah, I got it. This is the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, not a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro and seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. So, I can, so that's talking about, it says not a food and a water. It's definitely telling you it's spiritual. It's that word. Come. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. They're going to come to and fro. It says from sea to sea. So that's symbolic saying they're going to go everywhere looking for it. For the brothers that's out there on the highways and byways that's actually doing the work who believe in the Bible in totality. Come. You got the Christians, the Old Testament only, New Testament only. They all going to be looking for these brothers. <laughs> the Enoch brothers. Right. They're going to be the Josephus brothers, all of these Jasper, different. Mother Mary. Yeah, Mother man, they, Book of Adam. I didn't hear all these <laughs> oh, things. They're talking about Adam got his own book. Like, these people <laughs> these people are going to be looking, going from sea to sea looking for us. And they ain't going to be able to find us. If the Most High God don't want you to find something, you ain't going to find it. Uh -huh. Just like this Bible been in all of our face and none of us knew about it until uh -huh. he wanted us to know about it. Uh -huh. Until it was night time. Right. Uh -huh. So it ain't nothing too hard for the Lord. Ain't nothing too so hard. Go ahead. 
This nigga spitting. Con. Um, Amos 8 and verse 13. It says, In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. And, and that's what them, it's like, you got it. Go ahead, go ahead. And, and that's what them <laughs> same virgins was doing in Matthew 25, hence the relation while we pulled that scripture. As the fair virgins, them five virgins that went to the other five who brought, who was prepared, right. who had that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, who was anointed with that oil, they went to them. Right. But he told you they ain't going to, and we're going to be ducked off somewhere eating grapes. You ain't going to have the opportunity, you know, and they do all of that tearing to turn to the Lord to get the understanding. It's going to come a time where you don't have that, that time of grace, man. You don't have that window of opportunity no more. Let me get that. That is um, 97. Isaiah 55. Okay, not like that. Uh, but, but, God, it's uh, Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may, may be found. found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Uh -huh. So there is a time where that door of repentance is going to be closed, man. Mm -hmm. Just like it's about to tell us about in this parable. When your house are going to be like, hey, it's over with. It ain't nothing you, I'm going to do for you. But to touch on what he said in that Amos 8 and 13, it says those fair those fair virgins is going to be uh, going to thirst after the word, but they ain't going to be able to find it. So that goes into this parable of these five foolish virgins mm -hmm. that we just was going into who these five foolish virgins is. They're going to be thirsting after that word and they ain't going to they, they going to be they going to die of dehydration. Let's just say that. God. Hey, and just to throw some more meat on it, I'm going to jump back to Proverbs 1 and I'll start at verse um I start at 23. I start from the top, 22. It says, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you, because I have called. And ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have said, and not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear is coming. And man, we're going to be doing the same thing. Let me get that You right waited there. all year. You know, you waited all, all the day long. You seen the the, um, the thermostat heating up. Mm. But you want to wait at the last moment when the nuke in the air and you're like, damn. Simultaneously. I got a and precept. You, and immediately, you're going to jump on your knees and try and make atonement for your sins. And try and make supplications to the Lord. But that's not how it works. You think you can do wickedly your whole life and play the most hot like that? La ah, go ahead. Go I had a precept. Go ahead. All right, because he was talking about, you said, you know, watching, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're supposed to be watching. And I'm going to link this up with this parable, too. This is, uh, I'm going to read Matthew 25 and verse uh, 8 again. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. And in Luke 12 and 35, it says, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. You're supposed to keep your lamps burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, mm. that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and they will come forth to serve him. And he said they was there watching. They were watching. there watching. I got to pull two of them. Go ahead. What did, the, what did the Lord say he made us in Ezekiel 3? He made us the watchmen for Israel. God. So that's perfect. Exactly. God. I got to pull I gotta pull a couple, man. You know? So this is Revelation 1 and 3. It says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So you literally, the time is literally at hand, and you got to be steadily watching and be continual at those gates. And I got to jump to um, Revelation chapter 3 real quick. You know, you got to be watching, man. You can't be waiting and tarrying. You know, you being lukewarm. You don't know if you really want to get down with the truth. You know, you didn't um, submit yourself all the way to the nation, uh, to the to the benefit, the bene the benefit, benefit in the nation of Israel. And, um the uplifting and exhortation to the, your nation, to your right. nation of people. You yeah. kind of want to serve the Most High, but you kind of want to envy the oppressor. Can't have two masters. You can't have two masters, man. Right. Beautifully said, man. Um, this is Revelations 2 and 16. It says, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. It's like you. So like you, it's like you, it's like you. I'm going to jump down a little bit. Nineteen, it's like yeah. I don't know why you finding that. Oh, it's like yeah, I'm in a, I'm in chapter two. 
kind of why you finding that him saying basically you can't serve two masters didn't the lord say choose not the lord uh i think it was joshua he said choose you this day you whom you will serve God. you know God. choose this day who you gonna serve he gave hey, you man. you know hey man that's what hey man that just made me think of some fire and kings <laughs> man hey let me get that preacher what you're talking about because you're talking God. about the one in matthew i'm gonna put this in uh first corinthians that two masters first, first, yeah kind of first corinthians 10 and 21 it says, ye, can, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and uh, the cup of devils. Uh, ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. So like the brother said, you got to choose who you're going to serve, man. And it, you, hey, it says, uh, what it says, an eloquent man going to know when he falls. So, you know, we understand uh, just man falls seven times, but at the same time, an uh, eloquent man is going to know when he falls. Uh, so you going to know if you going to hell off or not. Kind. As simple as that. Kind. You gonna know if you eating at the table with the Lord or you eating at the table with devils. Kind. Being worldly as hell. The scriptures also say through the law I know what sin is. Kind. So you already know where you going off, just like the brother said. Kind. You know the law, you know where you're gonna fall. Kind. Not to beat a dead horse, but I got a beautiful scripture. <laughs> a serving two masters, man. This is first Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long have ye been between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if by all, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. And you can't be stuck between two opinions. And you tarrying, you don't know if, you know what they say? Um, you playing both sides of the fence. All right. You can't be that you brother, Straddling man. the fence. You straddling the fence, you know. You right. can't be that brother, man. I got one more. <laughs> because, at the, at the, like he said, like, at the end of the day, the Lord is, hey, you either going to choose or the Lord going to choose for you. Mm. You being lukewarm, you either going to choose or the Lord going to choose for you. And some brothers he already didn't got rid of. And this is what the Lord also told us um, back in the ancient world in the book of Judges. This is Judges 10 and 14. It says, uh, started 13, Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. It says, Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Kind. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And that's exactly what Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is doing right now. He's, you know, some brothers straddling the fence. So he got to choose for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you find yourself, you find yourself uh, dabbling in idolatry. Next thing you know, you're like, dang, when's the last time I read? Yeah. When's the last time I went to the highways and byways? I've seen it mm. with brothers. Right. But I don't want to stay on that too much, too long. So, so I had Shalaki. Yeah, where we at? Verse um, 7 reading down. down. I'll start up real quick at 7. Matthew 25 and 7. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Hold on. Quick precept. Quick precept. I found I found one where it was saying that Israel is the virgin. Salakia. Uh -huh. This is Isaiah chapter 37 verse 22. This is the word which the Lord hath spoken concerning him, the virgin, the daughter of Zion. Hath despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. So you know the quick precept show that Israel's the uh, Israel's the virgin. Kind of. That's a lot. Go ahead. Kind of. Verse eight. Um, and the foolish said unto the wise, "Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out." And that's what they gonna be doing, man. Kind of. At the last hour, they gonna be trying to you know make supplication and do the right thing. But, hey, man, he said, when your fear cometh, he will mock you, man. Right, he said the same thing in Job. Man. When famine and tribulation come, he gonna laugh at you. And you trying to play a player. All right. Come on now. <laughs> For our lamps are gone out, but the wise answer saying, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Right, that's like, hey... We tried to show y'all. Uh -huh. Don't be trying to... It, I know for a fact, we wise enough to understand the Lord ain't even about to let you play him like that. So us teaching you ain't really going to matter. Uh -huh. So he, they like, hey, just get on. You had your chance. It's over with now. Uh -huh. We trying to survive. Hey, can you precept. know... Uh, Cotton, Cotton, go ahead. This is Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 23. It's a lot. Um, it says, By the truth it saith not, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. So, while them foolish virgins is out trying to search for this word, they're going to roll upon something that's going to be like what they were saying was true. They're going to find that wisdom. They gonna they ain't going to find all the wisdom. They're going to find a little bit of wisdom that was like, yo, them brothers was right. Huh. Like, you know, or we should have been listening to them. Or it ain't got to be wisdom. It's, 
you know, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge is facts. That's when you look up the word uh. knowledge, it means facts. So they're gonna look at the facts like they did say something about army tanks being on the streets. Uh. They did say that this was gonna happen, that was gonna happen. Can't and they go Yeah, and it's gonna be straight facts, and that's when they're gonna be looking for us, but it's gonna be too it's late. Gonna be too that door of late. repentance is gonna be closed. Con reading on verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Yeah, I wish I showed up. And they go in to check the facts, you know, like the brother said. You know, they roll into the Christians, the Mormons, and like, damn, you know, <laughs> them Israelites, man. They was out there prophesying, you know, the truth. Okay. You know, they was trying to set us free. They was trying to heal the brokenhearted. Damn, how is we so foolish? Damn, our fathers inherited lies. Okay. Damn, how didn't we know? Why didn't we wake up sooner? Okay. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in. And he said, they that were what? Ready. They ready. that were ready, man. Ready to receive salvation. God. They went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Right, so they, they went into the marriage. That, that could be us getting uh, lifted up with the chariots. We, uh, uh, whatever, we, we literally... Have enough wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be saved. Uh, perfect in the eyes of the most high. Let's say that. God, hey, and that goes into, he said, they that were ready. And then the ones that wasn't ready, that didn't have enough wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, he said the door was shut on them. So God. what is that talking about? That's talking about grace. Exactly. It ain't no time for you to be tarrying and I don't know, and you straddling the fence, man. And you playing all day with it. God. You know? You can't be doing that, man. You know? The ball is in, um, it's, motion. It's, it's the, it's, it's in the motion, man. It's in the motion, man. And you got the ball in your hand. It's three seconds left on the clock and you, you don't know what to do. Man, you better shoot the, you better shoot the ball, man. Go ahead. Up. God, this is the book of Ezra chapter nine, verse seven. It says, since the days of our fathers, have we been in a great trespass unto this day? And for our iniquities, have we, our kings and our priests been delivered into the hand of the kings of the land? That goes into us being delivered into captivity, just like we in this last captivity. Uh -huh. It says, to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil and confusion of face as it is this day. And now for a little space. For a little what? Space. For a little time. Grace have been showed unto us from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape. Uh, and, pff, God, that's fire though, man. Grace is nothing to take lightly, man. It is a um it is a gift from the most high man it's to a get your soul. On grace. It's a deadline, man. And you playing all day with it. And look, yeah, how is y'all gonna pull up while y'all tearing it? We're gonna be in there and we're gonna be making hey, we're gonna be making uh mirth, man. Come on. We'll be making mirth and he gonna shut the door and say what? I never knew thee, man. I never knew hey, thee. Hey, and to add on that, we always use this analogy. Always, and it's a beautiful analogy. When you go ask for a grace period on your electric bill, when your electric bill has to get cut off, they give you a grace period. The two to three days, when it, after that grace period is up, no matter what, they cutting it off if you don't have the bread. This is the same thing with the Lord. He's cutting your lights out if you do not have what you need to have, which is built up in faith and having the law, statutes, commandments in motion. God. Simple. And let me finish this, though. It says, and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. Man. That's, that goes into, the, like I just said, the law, statutes, commandments, this is that reviving. That's the only thing that can revive us in this bondage. Hey, man, and that kind of goes, hey, and I'm going to read 10 again, and I'm going to touch on it on another aspect, man, to further the position on what we're saying. So this is Matthew 25 and 10 again. It says, and while they went to buy, while them other men who didn't have the oil, they didn't stock up on what they needed to stock up. They had to go back and, you know, go go fact check some things, man. They wasn't ready. Uh -huh. It says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready. And what does it mean to be ready, man? You know, that means you following the lamb whithersoever he goeth, man. Uh -huh. You taking up the cross and you following Christ, man. I already got that. Revelation okay. 14 and 4. I got you. It says, these are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. 
And man, you got to be one of them virgins, man. God. You got to follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth, man. Right, and that goes into that that 144K, man. You, that's what everybody want to be. Just like everybody want to be part of that first resurrection that it talks about in Revelation 20. Done, man. And we striving um, not just to get the kingdom and receive an incorruptible crown, man, but to be um, um, rulers and governors of the nation of Israel, man. Uh, you know? To be a prince, man. To be a king. To be a king. To join heirs with your hour mm -hmm. shot. Con, con, con. Um, reading on. I'm going to read 10 again because that's heavy, man. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. So I want to touch on one more thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. It Go says, on. them that was ready, and just like how I said in Luke 12 and 35, the ones that was ready were the ones watching, paying attention to the times, Man. paying attention to grace period. God. The Bible says, the grace... The grace that I have given thee is sufficient for thee. Time. Your grace is sufficient for you. You know what I mean? You're not supposed to be playing with grace. You got to be watching and paying attention to these times. You know, Yahweh Shah said, oh, you hypocrite. You can understand the times of the seasons, time. but you can't understand the time. You know it. I got, it's man. Luke 21. Go. Yeah. Yeah. But I got this one right here in 2nd um, Ezra. Go ahead. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 1. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Time. Time, man. Huh? It's a time for you to be building faith. It's not a time for you to be playing. It's not a time for you to be getting distracted. Time. It's not a time for you to be in your feelings. It's not a time for none of that. It's time for you to be building faith and bringing back Israel to this marriage. Time. Bending them to the marriage. Come, man. Huh? But you can keep going. I can slack it. Come. Reading on, verse uh, verse 11. Uh, the end of verse 10. And the door was shut, verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. That's heavy, man. So before you move on, let's go ahead and get that Luke 6 right quick. I'm going to go Matthew 7, 21. Go ahead, get yours. Because con, con. you know, even, even, you know, Christians, Old Testament only, all these people, say they all say Lord. <laughs> all of them. Uh, so let's get this uh, Luke 6 and 26, uh, 46, so like it. It says, it says, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? And that's why them, that door was closed on them because they didn't do what the Lord say. But they're still calling him Lord because they think they got a right in the, by being lazy. By not doing exactly what they're supposed to do, man. It's not hard to do what we're doing. Even though we're in a society that makes it hard, it's really not hard to do. Especially when you got brothers to help you. Come on. This is precept. This is Matthew 7, and I'm going to start at 22. 21. 21. So I keep my Bible a little marked up. It says, uh, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And I'm going to keep going. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? In thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. And that's going into them foolish versions. You know, you workers of iniquity, you um teaching this false hollowed out doctrine. You teaching everybody can be saved. You teaching your own gotta keep the laws. You teaching your own gotta believe in your house shot. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you if you if you love the father off tops, you gotta love his son. Huh. That's his kid. That's a spitting image of him. You know? Your house is a spitting image of the most high. You got to love them. That's just by default. And people saying that we don't got to keep these laws. Yeah, how was Shai kept the laws? Right. Are we not supposed to walk as he walked? Right. But they don't get that part. Hey, and that goes for you Negro only niggas too, Mike. You Negro only, y'all don't understand them. The Mexicans and them Indians, Puerto Ricans and all them, them is our brothers. And y'all need to stop tripping with that, man. Y'all just trying to solidify y'all y'all spot in the kingdom by exiting out y'all brothers, and that's not going to happen that way. Okay. And it goes for the Latino only. Also, we y'all brothers, we know this. Y'all okay. need to understand it. Y'all trying to do the same thing in reverse. Okay. Little do they know, they fulfilling the prophecy. Right. That um, mm -hmm. Judas shall vex Ephraim, and Ephraim... Uh, Sean. Shall vex Judah, and Judah shall envy Ephraim. Kind, 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 kind. That's what I would want it. But yeah, they don't know that they fulfilling the prophecy, but we are stiff-necked people. <laughs> That's all I really got to say on that one. We're stiff-necked people. 
Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up with the last verse. Uh, so like, yeah, I didn't turn to. Okay, 25. Um, I'll start at 11. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know ye not. Mm, God. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh, man. All right, that goes into that. Uh, Matthew uh, 24 and 36. Just like the days of Noah, what so shall the coming of the Son of Man be? Right, That's man. that door being closed on him. When that, when them chariots come and Yahweh shall come in and do his thing, oh, them doors is closed. He's, he coming to fulfill the will of his Father, which is that judgment that it's talking about in Isaiah 66. Mm -hmm. So you got to, at the end of the day, you're going to have to choose which one you want to be. You want to be the, the, the foolish virgin or you want to be the wise virgin? It's all up to you, man. You can either listen to them, them brothers that's out there on the highways and byways who are actually doing the, the work, who actually uh, learn the Bible in totality, or you can be as a foolish version they're going to get that door shut in their face. The worst thing you want to hear from the Lord is depart from me for I never knew you. Con. I never knew you? Like, come <laughs> on, bro. He like, said I never like, knew not, you. Not even like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but no. But I, I never, was right. You know? Right. <laughs> And then, you, you know, for the people that was in the truth and left, oh, none man. of your labor is going to be held accountable. Nah. Hey, what he's saying, Luke, um, he's Luke 9 and 62. He said, any man putting his hand to the plow and draw back, he is not fit for the kingdom, man. God. Right. If you stop doing something, man, let that be it, man. Yeah. Don't go back to it. A dog returning to his vomit, so a fool to his folly. God. God. And I want people don't understand how long this doctrine has been around. I want to touch on this. This is Jude 1 and verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Even Enoch was giving out this doctrine okay. a long time ago. Okay. So how, how, oh man, what do you how always say? A gnashing of teeth. Imagine that, a Lord saying, I have never knew you. You know mm. what that mean, right? You like, mm. you, you break down I'm like, man. Screaming. Yeah, like, man, what? He never, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, hey, what Peter say, Lord, thou knowest all things. <laughs> Lord, thou knowest all things. Lord, you know that I love you. <laughs> Niggas getting cut and getting shit. Getting cut. Right, he getting mad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga turning to cane and shit. <laughs> Niggas weird, man. This doctrine has been around for so long for people to just, to not have that oil. Man. To not have that oil. It, 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 me being in Christianity... It felt like it was too easy to get the kingdom. Way too. You ain't had to do nothing. I ain't had to do nothing. I bro, was like, you know. Up every now and then. Bro, know. getting bombed out. Thinking they about to get the kingdom. <laughs> hey, you show up the church rolling. You know? Right. Like, Sleep. Hey, Saturday, yeah. Saturday night was a long night. You had right. church yeah. rolling. My church took me to the rib crib a lot. Man. You know what I'm My church stayed feeding me pepperoni pieces. Yeah. All of the above, man. It's 360, like, you going home on a man. bus, pepperoni man, pizza. Yeah. Man, like, crazy. What, what, what do I have to do? It really it was that do as thou wilt spirit I had on me. And I'm like, I can just get the kingdom if I pray, you know? I was just dead. Part of the Valley of Dry Bones. I was dead. dead. I was a walking corpse. Right. Walking flesh. Y'all ever just seen a bag of flesh walking? Bag of bones. <laughs> yeah. bag, of bones. <laughs> bag of bones. Niggas gonna wake up dead. Right. Wake up dead. <laughs> Literally, you. I was waking up dead. God, my, like, I don't know if y'all feel like before y'all was in the truth, y'all spirit would just feel so dead. You wasn't feeding your spirit. You wasn't giving it this food that it needed. And that's how I was feeling. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm dead, bro. Like, I'm just waking up, going to church. Church wasn't even bussing. Right. Like, this doesn't even seem right. <laughs> Luckily, you know, Most High had mercy, had mercy on me. <laughs> Figured right. out this doctrine. Man. Wasn't a part of that foolish version. Okay. <laughs> hey, and to who to people who do not believe, I ain't gonna say do not believe, do don't know what the uh, sound doctrine is. Sound doctrine is the Bible in totality. Uh -huh. There's no different doctrines unless you're not using the Bible in totality. Uh -huh. You have to use it all, including the apocrypha. That's sound doctrine. Come. Uh -huh. Nobody got nothing else to add.
Give me that before you can do nothing when you get the shit before the truth. I'm gonna in the video as this. Man, we can spit that by heart. I, I know right. we can, but right here. it's better when it's come out. This soon. is uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. And it says, For we can do nothing against, against the, the truth, truth, but for, for the, the truth. truth. So, Khan, no matter what you these foolish versions do, no matter what they do, they can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. They fulfilling this parable, really. They for the truth in all reality. You know what I'm saying? And whether you for, whether you uh, trying to uh, get this truth to come out, you still going for the truth. You know what I'm saying? All praises. But we can do nothing against this truth, but for the truth. So, Khan, uh, with that, y'all ain't got this one in? Mm -mm. With that, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shem Vashak Yahweh Shah. Like the brother, uh, the head brother Hezekiah always say, never ever forget, death to America, and uh, Shalom. Shalom, Barak. Shalom.